Well, each weekend I host a week this week on the Hill on the Salem Radio Network, and it's a one-hour program, and it always includes an in-depth interview with House Speaker Mike Johnson. Well, this past weekend I caught up with the Speaker as he was in upstate New York. Among the topics he and I discussed uh, were the Democratic fundraising platform Act Blue, which may have been exploited by foreign actors to channel funds illegally to Democratic candidates. And also, we discussed the enthusiasm among Republican voters and how that's making Democrats a bit nervous, to the point where we've seen some desperate moves from the left. Here's how we started that conversation. Mr. Speaker, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, Tony. Great to be with you again. So, Mr. Speaker, a lot to talk about this morning, but let's start right here because we're, we're seeing fundraising reports that Democrats are outraising the Republicans, even though Republicans are setting fundraising records. Could it be connected to illegal funds coming from foreign sources? I, I, I think that the evidence shows that that is true. It's been a frustration of ours. As you know, I've been out on the road nonstop, and we set fundraising records. I mean, the last quarter, the third quarter that ended October, raised more money than any Speaker of the House ever in history, uh, both for my individual efforts and for the Speaker-supported Super PAC. Um, you know, it, we're 200, probably close to $280 million raised now. And that would be good in a normal cycle, except that right now, this evidence is mounting that the Democrats actually are getting this ill-gotten gain, okay? They use AgBlue, which is their online fundraising juggernaut, this website that they brag about. They, they've raised $16 billion on this site since it was created about a decade ago. In the last congressional cycle, two years ago, they raised $2.2 billion in this on this one website, okay? So they claim that it's new online low-dollar donors. Well, everyone has accepted that as fact. We've had sneaking suspicions something's off there, and now I think we know that's true because what the evidence is showing now is that people's names and addresses have been used on this website as if they are small-dollar donors when they have no idea that their identity is being used for that purpose. How are they doing it? The, the evidence seems to show that they're taking large checks from foreign nationals, adversarial nations like Russia and Venezuela and China and Iran, and they're breaking them down into smaller dollar donations and sending them through, and they're capturing the names of American citizens and using them. That's what the early evidence indicates. So there are investigations underway. The House uh, Administration Committee is on this. The federal investigators are looking at it. Um, there are serious questions. Subpoenas have been uh, issued now. And the frustration we have, Tony, is that, you know, this obviously looks to be a money laundering uh, organization operation at some level. And we don't know how big it is yet. We, we, we don't have all the evidence gathered, and it will take some time for the criminal justice system to play out, to adjudicate the cases. I think ultimately people are going to go to jail because this is fraud. But in the meantime, we have to contend with their avalanche of cash. Now, I, I, I'll just say this. I'm still very bullish about uh, the election in, in a handful of days here. I think we're going to win because at the end of the day, it's not about the quantity of cash. It's about the quality of the candidates, and we have better candidates. But uh, it certainly does make the challenge a little bit greater, and uh, we're going to work right through that. Mr. Speaker, a couple of questions on this. Does it appear that Act Blue, this platform, is complicit, or are they being used by other uh, actors here? That's the big question. Uh, I have my own suspicions, but, you know, these are all allegations at this point until we can dig into it. What we do know is that at the very minimum, they have lax verification uh, procedures uh, to, to prove who is what and who is doing what. Um, that is a serious problem. It's gross negligence. If it's not criminal intent, we'll find out. Look, I, I, I've been in this game a while. I, I know that people cheat in politics. It's a uh, it, it's really disgusting because there's so much at stake, and it 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 um, you know it really is a stain on the system. But we have to stop it. We have to make sure justice is done here, and I think ultimately it will be. Right now, though, we've got to contend again with their with their cash. Uh, by the way, let me just give this website. If you go to checkmydonation.org, checkmydonation.org, you might be one of the many thousands of Americans whose own name and identification is being used in a way that you had no idea about. It, it, what you do is you go to that website, you can do an advanced search, type in your name and address or your zip code, more identifiers, whatever, however you want to do that, and you can see if you indeed yourself are an Act Blue donor and didn't know it. Uh, what, what if you do find yourself on that list as an Act Blue donor? What can you do? Well, we have many, many, many people around the country who have 
been shocked and surprised that their names are on there. So there's an option on that website to click the list and it will send your information to law enforcement. That This has happened over and over and over and over. I've, I've been doing this in small groups where I am. I'm just, as an experiment, hey, everybody go to this website. And, and people in our Republican uh, rallies and groups are finding their names on this website. I think this is a broad, uh, serious problem. And so when the evidence comes in, I think it'll be shocking. Uh, uh, we're up against a break here in about a minute, but what I've heard is that the U.S. Treasury ha has been have been getting these alerts of of uh, potential money money laundering for some time now through these sources. I would assume that that triggered the Department of Justice to begin investigating, or are they slow to the to respond? Well, I look I, it, from my estimation, they've been very slow. I, we're trying to find out our own evidence on that as well through our House committees investigating this whole thing. But suspicious activity reports, or SARS, have been issued uh, in high volumes for quite some time. And it looks as though, I'll just say it, it's an allegation, I, we're looking into it, but it looks as though uh, it was slow walked. And this is a real concern to us. If we don't have integrity in the election system, that's the basis of our whole constitutional republic. Right. We all know how much effort's gone into election security. This is part of it, and it's real serious. That all the more reason why turnout is so important that people go yes. and vote and not allow this outside potential outside money, foreign money from foreign adversaries to influence the outcome of our elections. Mr. Speaker, you have to be encouraged as you talk about the enthusiasm. You've been talking about this for weeks. Early voting records have been set, even among Republicans, which are usually hesitant to vote early. What does that tell us? Well, there is a real energy out here, and everywhere we go around the country, we've seen it. Massive crowds, lots of enthusiasm, and new people coming to the parties. We've been talking about the demographic shift for weeks, and it is really coming to fruition. And we're very encouraged that the early voting numbers are, I think, will be historic um, when we count all this on the other side of the election. Uh, Republicans coming out in droves to get their votes counted early, to get the you know Bank Your Vote initiative that we pushed for the last year or two. Uh, it's all coming to fruition. And, and I think because of that, the Democrats are nervous and and uh, very concerned, and they're flailing in many of these campaigns. Certainly, you see the Kamala Harris campaign uh, with its back against the ropes, and that's why they're so desperate and making all these crazy statements this week. This is a good sign for Republicans, and we feel that energy. And we're going to run through the tape. We're going to run like we're 10 points behind. But the real clear politics average still has President Trump up in the battleground states. And if we keep that momentum through Election Day, I think we're going to have the outcome that we've all been working and praying for. Mr. Speaker, I, I, I want to go back to these congressional races where, in this last month, Democrats have outspent Republicans about $35 million in the top 25 or so races. The House is going to be decided. A lot of people focused on the presidential. I mean, that's the big ticket. But there are those that are living in conservatives, living in blue states, who, who will make the difference in the outcome of control of Congress, because it's those blue states that will actually determine uh, victory in some of these highly contested congressional races. Am I not correct? You're exactly right. And the outcome of those races, I mean, it comes down, Tony, as we've discussed, to probably about 19 races around the country, 19 House seats that will determine the fate of the republic. That is not hyperbole, because even if President Trump wins the White House and we win the Senate for the Republican Party, if you don't have Republican control of the House of Representatives, it's all for naught, because there's no question that they will impeach Donald Trump probably on his first day of office. We've already seen that play many times. Uh, and they will impede all the progress and everything that he and the Senate Republicans would want to do. The House is where the power begins, the power of the purse and all these other um, you know, things that we, we need on the agenda. So we have to have the House uh, majority. I'm convinced we can if, Tony, if everybody listening to our voices will get out and vote, especially in the blue states, as you noted. But even in the red states, in a couple of dots around the country, we've got really tight races in these urban areas in red states. Um, so in Nebraska and Iowa and other places where you wouldn't expect we'd have tight contests, we do. So we need everybody to get out. Uh, Californians, New Yorkers, uh, you know, I'll be this week before Election Day. I'll, I'll be back home in Louisiana uh, tonight and tomorrow. Then I'm back out on the road again before Tuesday. I'll be in North Carolina. Carolina and Virginia and Pennsylvania, these 
you know, Wisconsin, these states that are so critical to us, you have to you have to vote. You have to get everybody in your sphere of influence to vote because this one really matters. Yeah, I just want to communicate that to those living in the blue states who think, well, my vote's not going to matter because it's going to go for uh, Harris. Our states are going to go for these down ballot races are critical, yes. folks. So you have to vote. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the media, we it's so obvious that they're in the tank for the left. After I'm not going to play the clip again. I played at the top of the show where uh, President Joe Biden called Trump supporters garbage. And here is uh, the second paragraph of the AP report on that. It says, in a call organized by the Hispanic advocacy group Voto Latino, Biden responded to a comic at a Trump rally who called Puerto Rico a floating island of garbage. Biden's initial comments were garbled. They weren't garbled. He was very clear in calling Trump supporters garbage. But at the same time that they're covering and trying to do cleanup for the left, they're taking comments from Republicans out of context, trying to create more angst among voters. One of those this week regarded is regarding health care, a comment about Obamacare that has been taken out of context that you made. Can you speak to that? Yes, I was at an event in Pennsylvania. I mean, you know, I do these nonstop. I've, I've done events in over 250 cities at the end of this week in 40 states. So we have large groups of people in big forums all around the country. I've been doing this for a year, um, and and I've given similar comments before, but they're desperate right now. So somebody asks about the reform agenda going forward in the new Congress, and, and somebody asked about Obamacare. And my, my response was literally what I said was, quote, unquote, no, Obamacare. I said the ACA is deeply ingrained in our health care system now, for better or worse. So what we have to do is continually improve, bring improvements to reduce cost of health care, expand access and, uh, and and the quality of health care that's provided for all Americans. That's something that should be on the radar of every single member of Congress and, and both parties all the time. That's what I said. Well, they took the first two words, no Obamacare. And literally, Kamala Harris herself <laughs> press conference and said that the speaker has committed to repeal the ACA. I mean, they know that they're lying. They just made it up. And then this is the cycle of how it works, is that whatever the Democrats put out as the talking point, then the media, the mainstream media seizes upon it and they amplify it. And then it becomes this sort of part of the vernacular. They've been doing it to Donald Trump ever since he came down the golden escalator, and they're doing it to me as well. So I went out immediately. I was, I had been, after that event, I was in New York and we got a gaggle of reporters and I went, looked right on the cameras. I said, Kamala Harris is lying. This was what desperate campaigns do. And, uh, you know, the evidence is there. This week, they're playing cleanup on all sorts of things. Not only did Joe Biden say that uh, everyone who supports Donald Trump is garbage, uh, and his garbage truck uh, motif was fantastic after that. With his vest <laughs> and the garbage truck. I mean, it was it was epic. And, and but then also uh, Mark Cuban, just a day later, he said that basically all powerful Republican women, anybody who support Trump are are weak and unintelligent. I mean, so they don't have anything to run on. Tony, this is the thing from the very beginning. Kamala Harris cannot have a substantive conversation or a debate or a talking point on policy because every metric, every area of public policy is a disaster. And she's the architect of it. So they have to right. engage in this. I think people are seeing through it. Uh, we just got about a minute left, Mr. Speaker. One of the things the media has not pressed them on, because it's indefensible, is their whole trans ideology agenda that is uh, attacking children. Uh, it's indefensible, but the media is not talking about what they've been doing on that front. Yeah, they're not, because it's about a 90 percent issue across the country, maybe more than that, when people understand the informed voters on the polls and, of course, when they when they know about this issue. It's common sense that prevails, and we are the party that will provide common sense, restore order to this chaos, and Kamala Harris will double down on it. Don't ever forget, she is a radical San Francisco liberal. She has been from the very beginning. Her record is very clear, and that's why they don't want to talk about it. All right, Coach, final 30 minutes. What do you tell the team as they uh, head to the polls on Tuesday? Leave it all on the field. That's what President Trump is doing. He hasn't taken a day off in over 60-something days, and we haven't either, because we we, we have to do this. Don, John Quincy Adams gave us the, the best summary quote, uh, duty is ours, results are God's. So let's do our duty, and, and then we can sleep well at night knowing we left it all on the field. 
All right, uh, Mr. Speaker, I should have said quarterback. I understand that uh, Trump is the coach. You're the quarterback. So, <laughs> He'll be the coach uh, in that analogy. <laughs> all right. All right, Mr. Speaker, safe travels, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. You got it, my friend. Well, that was my conversation with House Speaker Mike Johnson during our weekend program this week on The Hill.